All right, so a lot of people ask me about sculpting all the time. Um, almost as many questions as I get about painting. Um, both are a pain in the ass when it really comes down to it, but it's one of those things you kind of have to learn if you're going to actually be an action figure custom artist. And I say artist versus customizer, because a customizer, is, as far as I'm concerned, is some dude that just is a, does a head swap. Um, and I don't want to just do a head swap or, you know, a repaint. And it's like kit bashing stuff that anybody can do um, with varied success. So what I'm talking about when I say custom art is I'm looking at people who do complete reworkings of figures. You are essentially reworking an action figure from head to toe, adding sculpt, you're changing parts, you're repainting it completely, um, you're swapping parts with other figures. It's a completely different figure when it's done versus what you had when you first got it and if you first looked at it. Um, so what I'm doing right now, you can see, is I am sculpting the spiky thing from uh, the first appearance, I guess, was Fantastic Four number 310 um, when he and um, Sharon Ventura, Miss Marvel, got further mutated um, when he got bombarded with additional cosmic rays. So um, what I'm doing is I wanted to make that figure because I always thought that was a cool design. I mean, I'm a, I'm a 80s, 90s, well, really I'm an 80s kid, but this was like 89, I guess this thing came out. I thought it was a cool design. There's a lot of stuff going on in Marvel back then that I like better than I, I like the original designs. I like this cool thing design because it was something different. That you know we had really never seen before, um, and I liked you know Thor's battle armor that he was wearing in the uh, Simmonson run in the uh, the late '80s. Something I'd like to work on and make too as a custom figure because it's just stuff we haven't gotten yet. So anyway, to do that, I really needed to just start making a thing figure as a, as the base, but I needed to completely sculpt all of these little spikes, which is not that difficult, but it's tedious. Um, and you can see what I'm doing. I'm basically just, I'm taking Abe's Fix-It. I'm taking Abe's Fix-It sculpt because I like it the best out of all of them. You can use Abe's Epoxy sculpt too. And you can, just as well, I mean, both work. It just kind of depends on your preference. And, um, Basically, just mix it, um, mix both parts. They combine together into you know, one blob. Um, it hardens. You have a couple hours to actually work with it. And what I'm doing now is I am pretty much taking little tiny bits and uh, sculpting into these little spikes that are going all over. And what I'm doing, you can see in the orange section where I did a color test already. Um, after I do these little tiny spikes in rows throughout the entire body, um, I am going back and I am using tools to um, actually add detail, rock detail. Um, you can see inside all the crevices, all the actual sculpted detail that are in here. Um, there's a ton. And then I could talk more about painting stuff later on when I talk about like the go-to, how-to, as far as this one worked. And I'm not trying to be symmetrical here at all. I don't want to be symmetrical here. I mean, he's just lumpy and spiky. Um, that's all he really is. So one row is not going to match the next row. Everything is going to be slightly different. Um, but the whole goal is make the spikes stick. Um, so the sculpt is solid and intact. and make a ton of them. This is taking forever. I don't know how many hours I'm already into this figure and you can see I'm only done the chest, the back. I'm not even done the chest, honestly. Um, but the chest into the lower abdomen and uh, sort of a little bit of the arms. The head was, head was interesting to try to sculpt. I had to redo the brow. I had to add these additional pieces on the side, a little bit more bulked up. I had to add an entire piece on the back to make it bulkier so it actually fit on there. 
um, and I'm sculpting this side of it. I already did one side and I'm touching up this side because I don't like exactly how it came out. So I'm just adding as much sculpt to it as to make it accurate. I and mean, what we're trying to do is I have a photo reference right here. We're trying to make them look spiky. We're trying to make them look like that. And uh, it's something everybody should do too. They, you should have some sort of photo reference um, when you're sculpting or painting. If you're not, uh, it's just foolish. Um, you go off your memory, you'll, you'll mess it up. Uh, no doubt in my mind, and I have. Um, everything I've done, I mean, this is all self-taught stuff. It's all trial and error. You know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, I just kind of figured it out. Now, as far as these rows go, I'm not too concerned about how they look underneath because there's just going to be another row. The bottom row um, right here is the one that's going to matter um, because I need that to look actually cool where it's hanging over the belt. And I'm probably going to go smaller, smaller, the next couple rows, smaller things to, to the point that it just kind of barely is over top of the, the belt line. Um, but I'll show you what I've done so far. I'm going to just hold this off. You see the chest, arm, the back. Um, that's all I've gotten done so far. And uh, I've done the knees. Um, the knees and the elbows. And I, I pretty much was like, all right, I'm done tonight. I'm sick and tired of sculpting. This is how it's going to look. Um, and I just put that on that area just to be done with it that day. Um, the neck was modified slightly. So, I mean, he's looking... He's looking pretty, he actually it looks bigger than the regular thing, uh, just because the neck sits up higher and there's so much additional sculpt on him. Um, so when he's done, he's gonna look, he's gonna look pretty cool. Um, he's not nearly done yet. You can see the detail that I you know, sculpted into that already. And I'm gonna show you how to do that stuff. So there's a couple tools you can use. Um, this is one, they're, they're these rubber um, tools. They're, that's some sculpting tools and what you do with these is you can kind of just move things around it, it's good because it doesn't get your fingerprints in it this is more for like smoothing and shaping than anything else um i i like pressing to make sure it's it's stuck to the actual figure itself so it hardens into the crevices and isn't going to pop off on me i don't like how it looks i can I can move the spikes this one feels like it's going to pop off so i'm putting it in a little tighter I'm going to move this one over. And you can kind of shape them the way you want. I feel like Bob Ross right now, just talking about spikes, happy little spikes. But see, I don't have a lot of detail. I'm just moving the actual the, the shape itself of the, of the thing. So, I mean, there's a ton of things you want to do. Like, I mean, I have, I have these just random things that I've made and used. Um, you have these ball things to smooth things out that you can use for stuff. But nothing works better for me than an old Zacto knife. Um, and what I do with the old Zacto knife is I just put line work into the pieces. Because again, we're, we're looking at rocks here, right? So rocks are going to be cracky and not symmetrical and I'm not worried about the bottom like I said because you're not going to see the bottom except a little tiny bit I'm worried about the parts you are going to see just putting line work in here and why I'm doing that is because one I want detail I want sculpted detail but the other thing too is I want um I want there to be something the paint can go into. If you see here and here, you can see how many lines and all that. So when I do the base coat, base coat adheres to everything really well, but then in the cracks, I could do a wash and the wash is going to highlight all of this sculpted detail that I'm doing right now. Um, you can see it see those little tiny lines there's not much to it I mean I'm gonna work it a little bit more than that but basically just making everything look a little bit sharper um, less rounded and uh, a little bit more rocky uneven 
um, spiky and you just kind of do that and shape these things until you get them where you want and then you kind of leave them there until they harden and this sculpt hardens it takes about three hours for it to fully harden but it does fully harden um, i'm going to move to the back for a minute i've been doing larger spikes in the back um i'm doing like heavier along here and here and what i'm doing now is i'm just kind of filling in again look how it's asymmetrical not you know it's not even at all um i kind of went down there at all. like a, i almost went like a stegosaurus type thing and now what i'm doing is i'm just adding in larger spikes and we're going to flare out smaller spikes as we go so as i gradually move the spikes are going to be smaller and smaller the lower they go and the further out they go to the shoulder area It's not, it's not hard. It's just practice and patience. It's really what it comes down to. But this figure has been, this figure is taking forever. And the cool thing about it, I mean, there's a couple things that are going on here. Uh, and I didn't anticipate a lot of it because I just, I jumped right in. I didn't think about the engineering portion of this. That's something that people that are action figure artists have to take into to account like we're not working with one single medium you know you have to be good at um pretty much everything you have to be good at painting you have to be good at sculpting you have to be good at all that stuff but you really have to be understand you need to be good at engineering um because if you don't understand how the action figure itself works um the mechanics of the figure um it's not gonna work so the biggest problem i'm gonna have right now is where the uh, the shoulders and the um, arms meet because when I'm doing the shoulders and the arms and they meet, if I bend up from this this hinge is going upward, um, these these spikes aren't going to be allow for it to go in or the spikes are going to break off. Um, so I'm leaving a little bit of a gap and I'm kind of using the illusion of the overhang. I'm, I'm going outward over top of the arm to kind of hide, to allow a little bit of motion there. So if there's overhang that hangs over the arm, I can get away with leaving a little bit of unsculpted space in there um, that allows, sorry, I'm trying to get this spike on, that allows you to have some range of motion on your action figure. And that's the thing that I think people take for granted. Like I'm, I'm not, I can't paint and I can't draw as far as like, a canvas I can't you can't give me a canvas and say paint me a scenery I don't know how to do that um, but if you tell me how to paint something you know in 3d um, from a, a statue I could paint a statue I could do it by hand I could do it by airbrush that's not a problem if you tell me I need to sculpt something I can sculpt something um, but I don't know that I'm good enough to just take a bunch of clay and epoxy and whatever other materials and just do it from hand. I'm oh, sorry, my, I didn't realize my camera was off. I was looking at the sculpt itself. Um, I don't know if I could just start, start from scratch. I need, I need something to work with. You can kind of see what I'm doing there. I mean, you can see the texture. I'm just adding texture to each of these spikes. And the more texture I add, more detail it'll look and the better it'll look when when, it, when it's painted um so when i use this orange fire bright dragon it's a layer um i'll be priming it first i'll use a primer first and then i'll use this on there as a layer and then i'm using the shade it's a red um as a wash essentially and the wash is going to go into all the cracks and the crevices and then i'll use a black wash also so I have more, more than uh, one layer of wash in there with different colors. So you'll have different highlights, different low lights um, in there. Um, and this is a lot for one little tiny video of how to make a custom figure or how to, this one should really just be how to, how to sculpt detail 
when you're doing a custom figure. And then I'm gonna turn over here and you can see some of these tools. I mean, again, I got, I got a file that works. Um, just the spiky, little spiky things on the file. Um, there's a file that has like a sharper edge that I can get more detail if I'm like sticking into something. Anything works really as, as sculpting tools that, that you can. I like these sculpting tools a lot. Um, they allow you to maneuver into certain areas. So if I can, there we go. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on that. It allows you to move and, and sculpt and do things in certain areas where, where it might be a little tougher to get to. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Like, I'm trying to get this thing in here to stick. Yeah, so this thing allows me to move. Here's some bump outs. And notice I'm just being able to make indentation crater type detail with this thing too. It keeps my fingers off of it, which keeps my fingerprints off it, which makes for a cleaner figure ultimately in the end. See? Um, and the cleaner the figure is, the better, the better it is. And that's with paint and that's with sculpt. So that is it was all sorts of things you can use pens pencils um anything is a sculpting tool essentially so this is the thing and hopefully once this is done i'll post this how-to video and take some questions on it um but this is how to sculpt detail work on an action figure and uh, we'll cover other types of sculpting we'll cover other types of painting um at some point